It's a year since world powers signed that landmark nuclear deal with Iran. Under the Seven Nation Accord, Iran agreed to scale back its nuclear program. Western nations, in turn, agreed to lift financial, trade and oil sanctions that have isolated and crippled the Iranian economy. All parties agreed they've lived up to their side of the bargain so far. But critics in Iran and the US are still trying to undermine it. And many Iranians say they've yet to feel the benefits of a liberated economy. Mariana Hond has the story. There are plenty of deals being made in the Grand Bazaar in Tehran. But a year after the biggest deal in Iran's recent history, many Iranians say little has changed. President Hassan Rouhani promised economic prosperity, more jobs, more choice, lower prices and greater opportunities. A year on, and the president's under pressure to deliver. There has been no tangible achievement economically. The government is talking about single-digit inflation, but you can't feel it. I can't say that society has experienced great economic growth, but after Rouhani took office, many good things have happened. Free from nuclear sanctions, Iran has boosted oil exports to more than two and a half million barrels a day, close to pre-sanctions levels. Foreign investment has increased. Meanwhile, experts say that whereas Iran might once have been able to build a nuclear bomb in a couple of months, it would now take at least a year, enough time to discover the threat and intervene. But the nuclear deal is vulnerable, and the threats lie outside the accord. Elections in the US and Iran could bring in new leaders with little sympathy for the nuclear accord, and non-nuclear sanctions continue to strangle Iran's economy. They're linked to Iran's human rights record and ballistic missile testing. Despite reassurances from Washington, investors and the international banking system have been nervous about doing business in Iran for fear of prosecution and fines. Many international banks do not want to take payments from Iran due to the not yet removed other sanctions from the US. So this hinders, of course, trade, and it, uh, U.S. dollar clearing is still not permitted, but uh, many other currencies are. It's forced Rouhani to scale back on a promise to attract annual foreign investment from as much as $50 billion down to $15 billion. A deal with Boeing involving dozens of jets worth as much as $25 billion promises to revive Rouhani's pledge. But Republican and Democrat critics in the U.S. are doing their best to derail the deal. And in Iran, hardline opponents of the president have seized on the non-nuclear sanctions as proof that the U.S. was never really genuine about forging a new relationship at all. The nuclear deal took effect just six months ago. In economic terms, it's still in its infancy. Many Iranians say they're confident the economy will improve, but it will take time time that Rouhani may not have just a year out from the next presidential election. Miriam Nahond, Al Jazeera. Let's bring in David Ibsen. David is the president of United Against Nuclear Iran. That's an international advocacy group that lobbies Western countries and companies about investing in Iran. Joining us from uh, New York City there. What kind of companies are you talking to and what's your central message to them? Well, thank you for having me. Our uh, central message to companies is that uh, despite the nuclear deal, there are still a variety of different complex uh, regulatory, legal, financial risks associated with Iran business, and that's a very treacherous environment for any responsible company shareholder uh, and, and employee or even staff member, uh, unfortunately. I think what's unique about our campaign and our outreach is that we're reaching out to a variety of companies across sectors, across industry, key sectors like accounting and banking, uh, sectors dominated by the Islamic Revolu Revolutionary Guard Corps, like uh, automobiles, um, and kind of informing uh, companies that there are uh, a multitude of risks and that now is not the time for uh, companies to rush back into Iran. But the nuclear deal in of itself was always perceived or is always perceived as being good news, surely. And if the choreography is slightly out of kilter vis-a-vis -vis business, international business, what currency you work in, where you move currency from and to, will that perhaps just sort itself out in time? 
Well, it may sort itself uh, out, out over time, but I don't think time is the biggest determinant of whether companies are going to go back into Iran. Really, it's Iranian behavior and Iranian actions, and the Iranians need to take some responsibility uh, for, for their behavior and misbehavior uh, over the last 30 some odd years, and also take responsibility for a poor business environment that's going to, to uh, prevent companies from, from rushing back in. Just since the nuclear deal was inked, uh, Iran has tested ballistic missiles. They've tried to uh, ship arms to their proxies in Yemen and elsewhere. Uh, they detained U.S. sailors in the Persian Gulf for absolutely no reason but to score a propaganda coup and all these things are going to make uh, companies wary about whether or not they're dealing with um, a responsible moderate uh, partner um, uh, when they're doing business but it sounds as if almost you want to start playing a blame game here and if you go back 30 years in any relationship between any two countries of course we could always list off the negatives but everyone wants this relationship to move forward in a positive direction Yeah, I mean, the fact is that a number of sanctions, both at the U.N., U.S., and the European Union level, uh, were lifted as part of uh, this accord. Uh, there are other sanctions that are in place in response to non-nuclear Iranian activities, uh, human rights violations, terrorist activities that have targeted, uh, targeted Americans and, and Europeans uh, around the world. And the Iranians need to understand that there may not be the appetite to just lift those immediately until we see verifiable, substantive changes uh, in Iranian behavior. The Iranians also need to look at their own business environment and look at things like corruption, lack of transparency, red tape, inconsistent application of the law, and wonder whether companies view this as a very kind of um, uh, opportune place to do business. David Ibsen, thank you very much.